We are on a roll recently with Mataro's figures. So, of course, we've got another figure based on an amazing Mataro illustration today to review. Her name is Aya Kuromine, and the illustration is off of the cover page of Mataro's Sex Symbols manga. We really like the illustration, so once I saw the figure release, I knew we would pick one up. Given the right price, of course. So when we saw this for a big discount from Amy Amy for a second-hand one, we pounced on it. This figure is 1 6th scale and stands just under 27 centimeters with the base, and is made by Daiki Kogyo, which is a pretty big figure company, so I have high hopes for this one. Aya comes with a host of accessories. Naming them all is going to take some time. Starting with the removable necktie, the bra, skirt, and the underwear. Next, we have the interchangeable face, and lastly, we have a set of arms to display her completely naked, without the shirt. The shirt is removable, of course, and has its own set of upper arms to attach to the body. And of course, we can't forget the base. It's just a basic plastic black circle, with printing of a checkered pattern and wet JK on it. The thing I do like about this is that there is a print of Mataro's signature on it as well. Sadly, I feel this is the weakest part of the figure. Starting with her hair, the end of the bangs and some of the separate strands look very detailed, but then as you move up to the top of her head, the detail just ends. The bangs are barely sculpted in as we move up, and ends in her top of her head being almost just a smooth piece of plastic. The hair on the back of her head is better, but the front is so bad it is unforgivable. The one thing in the hair department that I can compliment on is that the separation of the removable front hair piece is almost invisible. There's slight shadow painting in the hair, but definitely could be done a lot better. Moving to the face, it does not get any better here. Neither face plates look like Mataro's illustrations. The proportions are all wrong somehow. I feel maybe the head is too small and the eyes are too big or not separated enough. The eyes are printed well, but look lifeless. The nose is well defined, but look to be a bit too low on her face. The mouth shape is completely different to the illustration as well. The blush on her cheeks are there, but then that looks off too, since there should be blush going fully across her face in that area, not just the part under the eyes. Daiki did sculpt some ear details though, even though both ears are hidden behind the hair. So that's something. Overall, the illustration gives an impression of Aya embarrassingly beckoning you to her. The figure looks like she's staring behind you with either no expression or just a very slight upturned lip corner. The good news is that here it starts to get better. The necktie has okay details and the pattern is painted well. Her shirt looks fantastic with realistic folds and amazing shadow painting along those folds. Even the inside of the shirt has the shadows painted. Daiki also put in little details that weren't on the illustration, like the buttons down the placket and the cuffs. I do wish that the buttons were painted in a different color though, or maybe with a pearl white to separate them from the shirt. The bra looks great too, with lots of little details like the little red bow in the middle, as well as the frills on the side. The paint is pearlescent, which gives it a beautiful but subtle shine. The anatomical details are good too. There's not much to see at the arm since they're mostly in the shirt, but her hands are sculpted pretty well with good pink fingernails. They're not the best I've seen, but definitely not bad. The break where the arm can come off are very tight, and the hair hides the break well. Her abs area looks fantastic especially near her right waist, where there's folds of skin due to her pose. Her back looks good too, with the groove down her spine and small details where some fat or skin sticks out. Her skin tone is redder than a lot of other figures, but I think it compares well with the illustration. The shadow painting is nice, but maybe a tad too red there as well. The skirt has great fabric folds sculpted, especially the pleats, and the shadow painting is perfect. The underwear is just as well done as the bra, with pretty good details and that pearlescent painting. 
the anatomy continues to be a high point here, with a fantastic and realistic butt shape. The thighs could be a bit thicker, but otherwise looks pretty good. There's some details on the front and back of the knee, but nothing spectacular. There's also some very slight ankle detail, along with a good foot sculpt. The toes are well defined, and the right foot has a separated big toe, which is a nice touch. The pink toenails are painted nicely as well. Basically all of Aya's clothing can come off, removing the necktie, the shirt, bra, skirt, and underwear will take some patience, but the parts are well designed and aren't too difficult to remove if you follow the instructions. There's definitely going to be some paint transfer as usual, but it's not too bad. With her bra off, we can see that her breasts have a great shape and hangs naturally. Aya must be really cold since her nipples are very well defined. There isn't too much detail on them, but there is pink highlight painting. The choice of that pink highlight is a bit curious though. It's a darker, slightly purplish color. Her crotch area under the underwear is very underwhelming. There's almost no detail there, basically just a line sculpted. There's also very little highlight painting here. I think for this figure, I'd keep her fully clothed, except for the bra. Not only because this matches the cover illustration exactly, but that her breasts are so well shaped that it would be a shame to cover them. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. I'm really disappointed in Daiki Kogyo. The figure looks great except for one of the most important parts, the face. I can see that they put in effort to get the design and a lot of the details right, but the fact that they screwed up on the face is pretty much inexcusable. And it isn't like Daiki tried to do a bait and switch here. Looking at their prototype photos, they are slightly better, but the same problems on the face are still there. So obviously, I'd recommend against getting this figure. Or at least only get it if you're okay with the face and if it's on a big discount.